we then later on uh, reunited when he was doing the album um, what's the name of the album the one with China it was it was big and now he was now aiming for the bigger guns now because <laughs> he took three producers if I'm not mistaken I was there Monum Kundu was there um, Jairo Sambahamba was there Andy Brown was there, fine as a guitarist, but also I think he, in a way he had also a, a say, he had also a capacity as a producer. These guys teamed up with me, young as I was, and uh, we worked on an album. Um, but of not was a song that we actually created from from the start, the, which is China. We created the song called some guys from uh, from Seventh Day Adventists to do like the whole choir thing. Anybody got ever seen you? You know, like, I was giving them the notes and chi 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 And the Tungwe Ita, you know, just think that it's a small song. So we did the first draft. After we did the first draft, we, we then decided that um, he, we were gonna have two mixes because then he took it now to the big guys and uh and um and um and andy brown and uh, and jairos jairos is a serious producer and he if, back then he had done great works for people like uh dinom dondo and willem tight we're talking songs that really made sense and ronnie huni mazuao say um and even Innocent Sir God he had done stuff with him. He had excellent sound. He was a crazy guy when it comes to, to you know to putting sound together. So El Alexio went to them, gave them the draft that he had made and then they improved it. It became super 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 huge. And uh, we then released the, the two versions. The song becomes a hit. And when I say a hit, I like to safely say it, it, it became, I don't know, 10 times bigger than, than you know, Danana. Something that I didn't anticipate. It also went on to just get all these awards. If you know the history of Zimbabwe, 2008 was not a good year for Zimbabweans. So I recorded my first, my fourth album, sorry. And it was, um, it was very difficult. Uh, because I remember a couple of times that I had to walk to the studio from uh, I think for like 10 to 15 kilometers sometimes to a studio sometimes not because I don't have the money but you have the money but it's enough to take you to the studio but by the time you get you go back home the fares would you know would have gone up and uh, that was but you see the, the passion that I was talking about it, it drove me to still do it and I enjoyed the walk by myself without anybody just walking to the studio and then um, <clears throat> uh, we recorded then there's a guy there's actually a lady uh, who who noticed and she said she wanted to manage me but then I'm not sure what happened because she didn't really take up the role but she sort of handed me over to another guy called Prince Prince Jandira is now based in the UK Prince Jandira um, managed me for a while he also helped me with a lot of funding for the project which became easier for me and then I recorded my fourth album my fourth album had the song Shina I remember I had traveled to South Africa to see a friend and he was very negative about you know the the future of our country Zimbabwe but then, you know, I thought to myself, what good would that do? You know, not being hopeful for your own country. So, and they actually said in these words, people are waiting for the sun to come up in Zimbabwe. It will never come up. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's a Zimbabwean in South Africa was saying this. But I needed to say something different, you know, to myself and obviously to, as, as a musician to the people. So I started writing China and people loved it to my surprise. I was not writing it to become a hit song. I was just writing a song because that's what I felt at that moment. And it became a hit song. I would, I would proudly say it, it was an, an anthem for um, the end of 2008 to 2009. 
um, I performed at the Miss Tourism Zimbabwe in 2008 on the 31st of December. I remember that vividly because I had just uh, gotten married on uh, the 28th of December. I, I had had a wedding then. So I was actually, it was during my honeymoon, so I had to come from my honeymoon back to the performance and performed. And it became the song that I never, the, the response was overwhelming for me. And then, yeah, so that was it for Kana. It gave me a name. Uh, most people started calling me Shaina because of that song. On that album also there were a couple of hit songs, also Karuyo Aka, which is a love song that people loved. And then um, uh, I had an award also. I, I, it won video of the year for 2009, uh, sponsored by uh, Philip Chiangwa. And I, I, I got quite a few bucks from that, which was very encouraging. Like, so on Karuyo, one thing that I really emphasized on, or that I really worked on was the bass line. Because naturally, I really love the bass guitar, although I'm a guitarist. But uh, even when I compose my own music, I started composing music when I was uh, around 12, 13. I made sure that every song that I composed, uh, the bass line, uh, the drum pattern, and uh, then everything else. So when we first did Karuya, like I said before, it was r and So when Alexio left, I started imagining the song being very Afrocentric. So I started by creating the drum with a straight kick that was hitting all the four beats of the bar. And um, then we created a bass line, that, that bass line. And then after the drum and bass was uh, solidified, I started uh, creating the, the guitars. And um, I felt good after listening to it. I felt the, the, this song was now grooving in the right direction. And um, when I didn't change Alexio's vocals, I left them as they were. I just removed everything, the ideas that he had given me and put my own ideas. So when he came the following session, I played to him the, I, I didn't, I wasn't sure if, I, he was, if he was going to like it, but I was very happy when he liked the new version. So that's the version that we, that we used. Whatever he sets his mind on, we're doing a song like this, if he gives you the direction and if you follow it proper, and then you also add your, your, your prowess as a, as a producer, it's a rare, Kuti, you miss the mark. So our, 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 our workflow was so magical. You know, I, I just got used to the fact that if we sit down and we say we want to do something, it's going to be great and it's going to be big. So that's generally uh, me and Alexio. I actually always look forward, you know, I, I, I follow his music now with uh, Shades of Black. I know that they, they, they took a different uh, direction, which is not a direction that has so many of, of, of the young people as, as per se. Um, but it's, it's, it's got um, an identity now. I'm always, you know, uh, looking at them, you know, when they release stuff and stuff, and I'm always thinking, this guy owes me another hit, you know. We, we, we need to get into studio. I remember, we, I remember calling him and said, ah, you know what, we, <laughs> we need to just do something because I miss, I miss that. He's that kind of a person who does not impose ideas on you, but when he gives you ideas, if you listen, Ah, 99% chance you get a serious hit. And then after that, I released an album, did a massive launch, First Street free launch, along First Street in Arare, and um, did um, another private launch for the corporates, because I really wanted to engage the corporates in this whole, which was, I think, a good strategy. But uh, obviously there were also things that, because most people, it, it didn't get to people as much as I expected it to, but there were hit songs there. There was a song called um, Chiwande Wande, which is a love song that people still love up to now. And then, uh, yeah, that was my fifth album. But it's got a very unique sound. And it's very easy to be unique, because you just, just be yourself. If you are just, if you are just yourself, uh, you automatically do not sound like somebody else. 
So that's one element that, um, which is a huge advantage on his side.